Hello my brothers and sisters and welcome back to another mm, reaction packed episode of Chris the Butcher and friends and tonight brothers and sisters we have got something special it is something I did on the channel three years ago when and actually it's that long ago we was in the old house when I did it I'm going to do it a little bit different but the uh the premise is the same uh yes i've got myself some bubblegum pop i've got myself some chicken thighs and we're uh, i'm recreating i'm revisiting bubblegum chicken Ooh, i'm putting other things with it as well you know i'm not a complete psycho <laughs> You're going to have to excuse my crudeness in a minute when I move the camera. But, like I said, I'm having it with other things. I'm not particularly filming this because it's not about this. Also, it's not going to be a budget dinner. Although it wasn't really overly expensive. The, the, the most expensive thing on this was the chicken thighs. I did buy a lot of them. And I'll show you in a second anyway. But we've got some, uh, we've got some broccoli, we've got some uh, cauliflower. Underneath there, we've got some carrots. All frozen. Them are already blanched off. Then we're going to be for some roast potatoes. I've also got that going there for the for the for the mash. Because you gotta have mash, don't you? I'm not sure if I've used it yet, but I did pick up a saveloy. Oi, 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 saveloy cabbage. Uh, I think we're only about seventy p or something. Because Lou loves cabbage. I like cabbage. Uh, the bedroom and Dutch oven definitely loves cabbage. So yeah, let's move you over here. I'll turn it off, but I can't be bothered. It's more editing, isn't it? Right, so we have there, right? We have 16 chicken thighs. They're not boneless. And they're not skinless. But they're, I think they were £4.50 for the lot. Now, if we were to cook tea, dinner for us all, I'd have been left with about five. So, what would I have done with five? So, what, I'm, what I'll do with them, five, what I've just left over, I'm going to let them cool down. I'm going to put them in the fridge cover him some tin foil and uh, me and Lou will have him for our dinner I will strip a couple down for uh, our little bundle of fluff links because he loves chicken that little rat bag also we might as well go do it now won't we there is what I'm using this is what I originally used now if you want to see what I did last time if you ask me the video was a bit cringy uh, I've not been doing YouTube long and I did a lot of shouts I was sound like Brian Blessed for some bizarre reason uh, yeah, that one. You can buy two for two quid if you want, but I didn't. I bought one at £1.19, and Connor is secretly open. I have some left, which I will. There'll be a load of this left, because he loves this stuff, our lad. Right. What I want, though, is I want plenty of juices. I'm also going to cover this with tin foil and cook it for about an hour on 200 degrees. So hopefully... It'll have the, uh, like a steam effect. Hmm, I think that looks weird, doesn't it? It's a bizarre recipe. Last time I did it, I did it with a full chicken. Now, I'll keep that back. Look, we've, we've hardly used, we've not used, we've probably used about a third of it. So, yeah, I'm going to cook it in the oven with tin foil all over the top of it. I'm not putting any so uh, salt not put any garlic, I'm not put any pepper in it because you don't know what it's going to do with the bubble gum pop. Uh, yeah, we'll cook it for an hour. Then I'm going to take all the chicken out. Uh, in fact, I'll probably I'll probably won't take the chicken. Out. I'll probably drain all the juices from the bubble gum pop, all the chicken into another pan because then that'll be making the gravy. And if I do it like I did last time, the gravy will go pea green. It's weird, but honest to God, it's belting. And when you're cooking it also, it does smell like you're baking a cake. So I'll look forward to that. I'll be able to smell it. You won't be able to smell it. But uh, yeah, right, I'm going to cover this with tin foil. Uh, sorry, it be roast potatoes. And uh, I'll see you in about an hour. 
it's not been an hour, it's been roughly about 35 seconds. I just wanted to show you that, yeah, I have actually covered it in tinfoil. And I've got all around the edges, so no moisture can escape. Because I really, I want to braise that chicken in that bubblegum pot. And then it'll come back up, hit the tinfoil in there, and come back and hopefully penetrate the chicken. So the, the chicken gets that sweet bubblegummy taste, hopefully. Like I said, the last video I did, oh, it's on my community tab, I shared it last week. If you want to go on my community tab and have a look at that. And like I said, but I did it with full chickens. I'm doing this with chicken thighs and these are proper now submerged in it. So uh, hopefully this will be 10 times better. Right, definitely. I will see you in an hour. I've decided I am going to do the Savaloy cabbage. Uh, I know it looks like there's a lot in that pan. That's the pan I, bought, uh, I blanched the rose potatoes in. Uh, but they will look down and go down. Yeah, I've decided I'm doing the Savaloy cabbage. Because if Lou finds out I had a Savaloy cabbage and didn't use it. Should kill me. And there, let's be honest, we don't want the wrath of that, do we? Right, I promise you, this has now definitely been one hour. And you're going to get a look at this chicken and this bubblegum pop the same time I am. Uh, the problem is I've got to get on, I've got to get this off and it burned my fingerprints off. Because it, oh, you see steam come out there on the corner. Look at that. Now, basically that has been steamed and boiled in the bubblegum pot. And it hasn't changed its colour, hasn't changed anything. But what I want to do is I want to get all that juices, because that's that bubblegum pot mixed in with the chicken juices. I need to get them in a pan. I probably have to do it off camera because otherwise I'll end up making a mess. And I need the room because my tripod's in there. Uh, so I don't scald myself and end up at A&E. But yeah, the uh, raw potatoes and they done, the savoy cabbage and they done, the carrot, uh, the carrots, broccoli and co uh, cauliflower and they done, and the raw, the potatoes for the mash are done. And in fact, I need to turn them off before they burn to the bottom of the pan. Oh, wrong one. Done. So when we come back, I will be. <laughs> oh, I'm putting the chicken back in the oven as well to crisp that skin up as well. Hopefully, just dry it off a little bit. Uh, yeah. Other than that, we're coming back with the bubble gum grid I said I were coming back right I just wanted to show you this uh, I've now got all the juices out of the uh, the pan into there I'm gonna get that on the oven in a minute I don't really want to add gravy granules to it as such but what I have got is I've got a couple of uh, I know it's chicken don't shoot me I've got a couple of bovrels which I'll probably throw in there but look at the chicken. Now, if you saw that chicken and you didn't know what I'd done, you'd be like, that's been condemned. That chicken's been condemned, Chris. It's got blue dye all over it. No, it hasn't. It's got bubble gum <laughs> pop condemned all over it. Right, anyway, I'll crack on. Down set gravy. Get them back in the oven for 10, 15 minutes on full power just to crisp that skin up. You know what? I won't go do this, but I am going to do it actually because it, it, it warrants it. I am going to put some salt. I'm going to put some salt on there to crisp up the skin because I'm going to. It, I'm going to have to. I? You can't have chicken skin without salt on it, can you? There we go. Don't be shy with salt, by the way, when it comes to chicken skin. Bang. So bad. Right. I will see you very very shortly. Shortly. Well. There it is on the hob. Right now, it is very, very thin. Now, I'm a northerner. I like thick gravy. But I don't know how thick to take this. All I do know is I'm going to put two bovril, 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 two bovril cubes in it. And I've made myself a cornstarch slurry. But I've never done it before. And I think I've made myself far too much. So I'm just going to put that in I think that'll do it obviously I've got it on a medium to high heat and I think is the bovril cube is what is going to turn it green as you can see before your very eyes <laughs> it's going green right what I need to do with this now is I need to reduce this a little bit so it thickens and basically 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring you back when it's ready. But after that segment, I'm basically going to be dishing it up. On a, it'll be dished up. And I'll be pouring our bubblegum uh, gravy over our bubblegum chicken and uh, all the other extras around here and stuff like roast potatoes and, you know, shit like that. Right. I'll be back. There is our bubblegum gravy finished. Now, the first time I did this, it went pea green. Now, I did use chicken stock, if I remember rightly. This time, I've used a bovril and I've used a corn flour slurry and it's kept a gravy colour. It's not gone green. Do you know what? I'm disappointed I ain't gone green. But it does smell the same. It smells very beefy now as well, but with probably, probably overdid it with the uh, bovril. Well, you can't overdo it with bovril, can you? I've not put any gravy granules in there. It's just a corn flour slurry, two bovril cubes with the chicken juice and the bubblegum pot mixed in. That smells very, very sweet and probably won't be very good for my diabetes. There you go. Right, the next time you see anything else, that is going to be poured on my bubblegum chicken. So there is our bubblegum chicken. Don't let the colour put you off because it'll be nice and sweet and beautiful. Obviously, all the condiments... And uh, the only thing left to do now is pour on our bubblegum gravy. Get in. There it is, brothers and sisters. And it won't be a bizarre recipe or any recipe without some sort of taste test. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's get some. The main thing we're here for is this chicken in it and that gravy. So we're going to get some of that gravy and the chicken and. That is sweet. Mmm. I honestly think, right, I'm onto something here. I've completely changed the taste of that chicken. Now, I think if someone doesn't like chicken, they will like this. And then there's other people that like chicken and be like, that is minging. I think that is superb. Mmm. I'm walking away from camera. I'm basically in ecstasy. It's sweet and I'm starting to talk. I do apologise about that. I, I took a massive piece of chicken that uh, I underestimated. <laughs> uh, the mash, I was lazy. I didn't peel the potatoes for the mash. I did wash them. Got our roast potatoes. I didn't peel them either because I was being very lazy. But we want to eat for that. We're here for that chicken and that gravy. But the first time I did do it, the gravy went green, but I didn't use bovril and I didn't use a, a cornstarch. So I think that's what's kept it uh, a gravy colour. Try it with a chicken stock. You never know. It might work out. A chicken stock is what sends it green. I think, did I use a no stock pot? I used a no thing last time. I can't remember chicken, beef or what. I have no idea. It was three years ago. Anyway, roast potato. Demi good. Superb. Do you know what, brothers and sisters? Honest to God, you've got to try that at least one time in your lifetime. I did it three years ago. I've done it again today. Obviously, it turned out a little bit different. I used... Chicken thighs instead of full chicken. I use bovril and a cornstarch for the gravy and not a Noah chicken stock cube. And I can't know what we used. We sent it green. So it wasn't green. I'm a little bit disappointed it wasn't green. But it still tasted. I remember three years ago 
The chicken was very, very sweet. It was very, very tender. It was very juicy. Basically, I, I basically steamed it and boiled it in the uh, bar's bubblegum pop. But yeah, you've got to try that. Either use that recipe or use the one I did before. Or make your own up. Do you know what I mean? It's not set in stone. I don't think I've seen anyone else apart from... Well, the first time I did it was up to no good. The channel up to... I don't know if he's still going. I haven't seen him for ages. He recreated it. And it, it is look banging. And his, his gravy went green. So why did my gravy not go green this time? Hey, well, I don't know. All I can say to you is... Get it tried once in your life. If you don't like it, you know you know not to do it again. If you do like it, you could have it every other weekend, can't you? Because I loved it. If you like this, press like, comment, share it on your social media, and subscribe. And become a family member of Hashtag Team CTB, where I love you.